Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be reviewing the new incinerator anti-aircraft vehicle and we're going to be talking about all the ways it can be used in combat and also all the ways that you can counter it. And it's not going to be what you expect. So let's go ahead and get right into this video. If you want to buy this new anti-aircraft vehicle, you can find it here. It costs six million dollars to buy, so it is pretty expensive, but you can be sure that it does exactly what it's advertised to do. For the new incinerator, the top speed is okay. It can beat a rhino, but it can't really beat anything else. As you can see, I can catch it very easily with him, and the acceleration is basically instant, but the top speed makes it so that it doesn't really do much anyway. This thing can last a while in the water because of its high HP, but if you try to shoot anything, then you may flip over because of the recoil of the rockets. This thing has 1200 HP, which is more than anything else in the game besides the Rhino and the Marauder, making it a very heavily armored vehicle, although it still can be destroyed quickly. One thing to note is that this vehicle starts to smoke and take damage after it hits 350 HP, which is faster than most vehicles, which starts taking damage at 150 HP. If you want to try to counter this thing, make sure not to shoot the actual launcher because that thing doesn't take any damage, only the body of the vehicle will take damage. One interesting thing about this vehicle is that you can get into it and then your name tag will be hidden from other players. This is also the case with the Rhino, and basically what you'll have to do is you'll have to rely on radar. If you don't see anything there, that's an enemy, and if you see someone there, then it's probably a teammate, so that's just a good thing to have. There is a cooldown to it, as you can see 180 seconds before you're able to spawn another one, and this applies to the Rhino or the Incinerator, meaning that you can choose one of these to spawn. And just as a side note, this does not conflict with your aircraft spawning. This is the lock-on range for the Incinerator, it can lock on from right around here to right around there. And as you can see, this is a very long distance to be able to lock on from. It extends all the way to the runway. The incinerator is able to shoot at the ground and it'll basically aim wherever your cursor points, but it's not always reliable. As you can see, the recoil is pushing it around a lot, making a lot of the missiles miss. And also, sometimes the missiles will go in weird directions that you don't aim. Say if I aim right down here, the missiles just don't lock on anywhere at all. This right here is the lock on time. As you can see, it's really fast. The incinerator will lock onto air targets, and this includes anything such as helicopters, planes, and the hyperglider, but it won't include the commutator. And it doesn't matter whose team it's on, it'll lock onto the vehicle anyway. If it's a friendly, it won't deal any damage. But it will also actually lock onto default vehicles spawned by the game. As you can see, it's locking onto the buzzard right there, even though no one's in it. And this can get pretty annoying sometimes if you're trying to scan like a radar. You may know the strategy to prevent lock-ons from buzzards or warhawks or anything that shoots those kinds of missiles by spinning with the cobra and basically it prevents lock-on by swapping targets between two people but it actually doesn't work with the incinerator. With the incinerator it's kind of different because this thing actually locks onto vehicles instead of players meaning that you can still shoot it if you're locked onto it. The tolerances for lock-on for the incinerator are pretty small when you get to close range with it, meaning that if you're close up, it's much harder to lock on than it is if you're farther away. And you can see that in this video, it doesn't matter the size of the actual vehicle, it just matters the distance away that you are. This is what happens when a Warhawk tries to outrun the missiles. This vehicle shoots a missile every half second, and since the missile does 70 damage, it has a DPS to vehicles of 140, and it only does 20 damage to players, so you do the math on that one. These missiles are very accurate. They can even hit hypergliders moving at very high speeds. Usually, you'll be moving around, but basically, if you want to try to counter an A-10, basically whoever sees the other person first is going to win. 
there are a few interesting ways to go about countering this vehicle and one of them is by using low flying air vehicles and that includes stuff like the Cobra, it could be stuff like the Spitfire. Basically what you want to do is get so low and close so that the missiles aren't even able to lock on to you and if you even do manage to get a missile on you it would most likely miss because this thing aims so far up. One of the best strategies to use against this vehicle is going to be the M4 or any kind of small arms fire that you have. Basically, this thing can't lock into ground targets or any kind of ground vehicles, so this is going to be your best bet. Although, if you do get to a gas station, you're going to have to use a lot more DPS to be able to take it out. That means using something like an A-10, Spitfire, Adreno, or a Night Rider. Thanks for watching this video. As for whether or not the incinerator is worth the 6 million, I would say no, it is not worth it. Mostly because this thing can do everything that the scout does, except only a little worse. This scout can attack all the A-10s, it can take down any vehicle, it can attack ground targets, but this thing all it has going for it is the missiles, and you can put missiles on this thing as well, making this basically just a cheaper version of that. So I recommend that you do buy if you have trouble with A-10s or hypergliders a lot. I know I have trouble with those guys. So that's why I decided to buy it and it's been worth it for me. But if you're not a PvPer, probably don't buy this vehicle. Alright, see you guys later.